Hello everyone, welcome back to Conflict Skies and Steel. Tonight, the truth that was never meant to escape the shadows is finally surfacing a story that's sending shockwaves through every defense ministry from Tel Aviv to Tehran. For years, Israel ruled the skies with stealth invisible, unreachable, unstoppable. Its F-35 Iadir fighters slipped through radar grids like ghosts, their existence only known by the destruction they left behind. But now something has changed, somewhere deep in the Iranian mountains, a quiet revolution has begun, one that has stripped the veil of invisibility from Israel's most advanced jets, they call it the loop, and this system, born from the ruins of sanctions and secrecy, has just rewritten the laws of modern warfare. From the exterior, this new reality began with silence, not explosions, not clashes, but silence. Israeli pilots noticed at first, strange feedback in their radar systems, subtle electromagnetic echoes that didn't belong there. It was as if someone was watching from beneath the noise of the atmosphere. Flights that once went undetected started triggering faint alerts. And deep within Iran's defense grid, a pattern was forming. The loop network was listening. It wasn't emitting powerful radar waves like traditional systems. It was simply absorbing. Passive, patient, and invisible itself, it built a living map of the sky using reflections from civilian towers, satellite transmissions, even weather distortions. Inside, it looked less like a military installation and more like a digital hive. Hundreds of processors stitched together millions of electromagnetic threads every second, teaching an artificial intelligence to recognize the invisible. The Iranian engineers had achieved something the West once claimed was impossible passive detection so precise it could sense the void of a stealth aircraft by reading the absence of normal signal reflection. Every silence, every shadow in the spectrum became a signature. The more invisible the jet, the clearer its outline became to the loop's neural radar. The performance of this system is what turned skepticism into fear. Analysts studying intercepted data realized that the loop could track lower, servable targets at over 400 kilometers, not through traditional radar returns, but through distortions in atmospheric scatter. It was no longer about bouncing radio waves off an aircraft. It was about sensing how the air itself was disturbed by its presence. The F-35's advantage, its low radar cross, section suddenly became its weakness. The jet's smooth design absorbed radar waves perfectly, but it also created a vacuum in the ambient electromagnetic environment. To the loop's passive sensors, that vacuum was a blinking red flag. Iranian operators began to simulate interceptions based on these readings sending coordinates to S-3, 100 batteries, and Bavar-373 systems that suddenly locked onto stealth jets with shocking precision. What had been untouchable was now exposed. The Israelis, masters of electronic warfare, scrambled to understand what had gone wrong. Their most advanced stealth fighter, equipped with domestic EW systems, date, effusion, and jamming pods, had met something it couldn't outsmart a radar that didn't even emit signals. You can't jam what doesn't transmit. You can't trick what only listens. The safety mechanisms of the loop are equally terrifying in their simplicity. It's not a single radar base, but a dispersed web of hundreds of micro stations scattered across Iran, Iraq, and even parts of Syria. Each node is portable, self-powered, and disguised as civilian infrastructure communication towers, relay masts, or mobile weather scanners. If one node is destroyed, the rest instantly reconnect through quantum, encrypted satellite uplinks. It's a living organism, regenerating faster than it can be attacked. That redundancy makes it almost indestructible. Israel could bomb a dozen nodes, but the system would rebuild itself before the smoke cleared. This resilience ensures Iran never goes blind again. 
Behind that resilience lies the unique selling point of the entire network. It thrives on its enemy's arrogance. For decades, Israel's strategic doctrine relied on the belief that stealth meant immunity. The F-35 Iadir wasn't just a fighter. It was a statement of dominance, the ultimate deterrent. But the loop turned that very philosophy into a weakness. Iran understood that it couldn't outgun Israel's air fleet or outspend its allies. So instead, it built something asymmetric, a system that weaponized information itself. By collecting passive data from every source imaginable, from TV towers to maritime radars, it turned the electromagnetic spectrum into a weapon. The battlefield was no longer about who had more planes, but who could see first. Inside the nerve centers of this network, Iranian officers watch the skies through an ocean of data. AI algorithms sort through billions of micro-signals, isolating anything that disturbs the natural flow of radiation across the region. Each detection is cross, referenced with known flight patterns, satellite traffic, and atmospheric conditions. What emerges isn't a single radar return, but a complete behavioral model of any object moving through airspace. Loop doesn't see a fighter jet, it sees how the environment reacts to it. That's a level of detection no stealth coating or angular design can hide from. In practical performance, this translates into control. Iranian early warning units can now detect incursions long before traditional radar locks are achieved. Instead of waiting for a target to enter range, Loop projects potential flight paths, predicting where an aircraft will be, not just where it is. This predictive capability makes traditional stealth tactics obsolete. By the time an F-35I crosses the border, the network has already painted a ghost trail, a digital echo predicting its trajectory, altitude, and potential intent. It's almost as if the system reads the pilot's next move before it happens. The Israeli Air Force, long accustomed to invisible supremacy, suddenly found itself facing a mirror. During exercises near the Gulf, radar anomalies from the Loop network disrupted operations so effectively that Israeli pilots were forced to switch to LOAF. Frequency flight patterns, increasing risk and fuel consumption. What used to be a silent flight now required electronic camouflage, false emissions, and decoy drones all just to approach enemy airspace. And even then, Iranian radar watchers could still see the disturbance patterns. The hunter had become the hunted. To make things worse, Iran's engineers have already begun exporting this technology. Reports suggest early versions of the loops, passive modules, have been shared with Hezbollah and Houth I units allowing smaller militias to build micro grids capable of spotting drones and stealth bombers. It's a nightmare scenario for Western planners, a stealth aircraft's greatest weakness being exposed not by billion dollar superpowers, but by low cost sensor webs run by guerrilla groups. The cost ratio is staggering. Each loop node costs less than $2 million to produce. An F-35 costs over a hundred million. That means for the price of one stealth jet, Iran could deploy 50 radar stations that see it coming. The economics alone destroy the myth of invulnerability. This price dynamic redefines air power. Stealth, once the holy grail of military aviation, now faces an existential question. What good is invisibility when your opponent can detect the shadow of your silence? Iran's answer is simple adaptation. Every time a Western aircraft flies near its borders, the loop learns. It records the tiniest electromagnetic ripples, refines its algorithm, and strengthens its recognition models. In effect, Israel's own presence helps improve Iran's defense. The system feeds on encounters, evolving like a digital organism with every mission flown against it. 
The longer the conflict simmers, the sharper the loop becomes. Inside Israeli command circles, panic quietly brews. Engineers are now working on countermeasures that operate on cognitive deception systems that inject false environmental data to confuse passive detectors. It's electronic warfare at a whole new level, not about overpowering signals, but manipulating perception itself. But for now, these are experimental. The operational reality is harsh. The F-35's advantage is bleeding away with each passing month. Israel's stealth edge, once its ultimate guarantee of safety, is now an illusion. The safety countermeasures of the loop also extend beyond physical protection. It's built to survive cyber attacks, electromagnetic pulses, and even targeted satellite disruption. Backup generators, offline storage, and redundant fiber optic lines make sure that even under total blackout, the system continues running autonomously. Each node is capable of functioning as a Miniradar command post, allowing decentralized operation. It's as if Iran has learned from every war it's ever fought every time its communication was jammed. Every base bombed and built the answer into this machine. But perhaps the most shocking revelation is what's hiding inside the loop's code. Intelligence leaks suggest portions of its AI algorithms weren't built in Iran at all. They were shared. Russian engineers, veterans of counter-stealth projects like the Nebo-M, provided foundational radar mathematics. Chinese specialists contributed adaptive learning models from their SkyWave over-the-horizon network. Together, they formed a triad Russia's detection physics, China's machine learning, Iran's tactical deployment. This alliance means the loop is not just a national defense project, it's a joint experiment by powers determined to end Western air dominance. This revelation has set off alarms inside NATO headquarters. The idea that a coalition could build a passive radar network that sees stealth fighters undermines decades of Western strategic superiority. Suddenly, the very technology that defined the modern era stealth is under threat. American analysts are quietly acknowledging that the next war may not be fought with jets that can't be seen but with networks that can't be silenced. And that gives Iran, for the first time in its history, something close to air deterrence parity. For Israel, the implications are existential. Its ability to project power across borders depended on stealth. The F-35I was more than a weapon, it was psychological dominance. Every time it flew unseen, it sent a message that Israel could strike anywhere anytime. The loop has broken that illusion. Now every mission carries uncertainty. Every incursion risks detection. For a country that survives through deterrence, uncertainty is the deadliest enemy of all. The unique selling point of the loop isn't its technology, it's the shift in mind set it forces. Iran no longer needs to match Israel's arsenal. It only needs to make it hesitate. The fear of detection is as powerful as detection itself. That hesitation is strategic victory. It's the kind of quiet warfare that doesn't make headlines but rewrites doctrines. The price for Israel isn't just financial, it's psychological. The billions spent on stealth, the years invested in perfecting radar absorption and emission control, are now questioned. If a dollar two million sensor can find a dollar one hundred million jet, what happens to deterrence? What happens to military pride? These are the questions echoing through Tel Aviv's defense corridors tonight. Yet, the loop isn't invincible. It's new, it's learning, and like all technology, it has vulnerabilities. Its reliance on environmental data makes it sensitive to atmospheric anomalies and magnetic interference. Israel's scientists are already experimenting with electromagnetic pulse bubbles and decoy microdrones that flood the loop's sensors with false echoes. The next stage of this conflict will be fought not in the skies, but inside the invisible battlefield of data radar illusions, algorithm wars, 
and signal manipulation. In the end, the battle between stealth and detection has come full circle. What began as a race to become invisible has turned into a war to perceive the imperceptible. Iran's loop has forced the world to rethink what it means to control the sky. The future will not belong to whoever flies the fastest, or the highest it will belong to whoever listens the deepest. And that's the shocking truth behind how Israel lost its stealth edge, not through battle, not through failure, but through the evolution of silence itself. In the age of electromagnetic warfare, silence has become the loudest signal of a